Hey, thanks for joining us. We're going live with FCTV. Neither of you on the couch look like Dave Sasarik. I wish I was half the man, Davis. I'm Maybe. sorry. I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to not screw it up until he gets back from Brazil. You're okay. holding things together. Holding a spot on the couch. Well, Jen Frame is with us. Previous guest to going live, willing to come back. Can you believe that, Mario? Hey, I've been back every. There's, there's something. There I mean, is. Something must be in the water. It is. Or whatever's in your cup. <laughs> yeah, it, it draws you back. It brings me here every other week. Oh. Well, I came back because Dave's not here. That's. So. Hey. <laughs> does this air in Brazil? It does not. I well, believe. Uh, you're lucky. I, I, I can be on the next flight. They could probably get it on the internet, so I wouldn't oh. be surprised if Dave is. Do they have the internet right in Brazil? They actually do a lot of Wi-Fi, from what I understand. Really? It's new there. Is it AT and T? Uh, it is. Well, probably Verizon. I saw those maps. You, you <laughs> There's a lot more red than blue. <laughs> and I must be a glutton for punishment because I have AT and T. Yeah, I do too. So <laughs> hey, hey. Okay, so we have it's a like great we show. That. Yeah, it really is. It's you guys want to go get cell phones after the show, before the show? It's like they're sponsoring cameras. us, but they're actually not. Um, well, they should be. Why don't maybe you after tell they them? see this the episode, the cameras are rolling. Why don't you give tell us a call? Them? We'll fit you in. Okay, so we have a great show lined up. We're actually going to be talking today about a few events that are going on in the local area. Uh, Market Street Arts Festival. We're going to have Emily Lapisardi on the show here today. She's going to tell us all about it. Uh, also, our musical guests are going to be performing at the National Road Heritage Festival. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. A lot of fun things coming up. But it's graduation season, as you That's may or may season? not know. It is kind of a season because it doesn't all happen one weekend. So yeah. I guess you could call okay. it a season. Spread it out. Um, so what I did is I looked up some interesting degrees that celebrities hold. Oh, okay. no. Are and these I real or are these like the... These are actual degrees that they hold, okay. but you might not expect them to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a degree. Okay, this degree is accounting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you three celebrities. Each of you pick who you think has this degree. So accounting, oh, accounting is, uh, would you think that Ray Romano, Jerry Seinfeld, or Tom Cruise has a degree hmm. in accounting? I'm going to go with Seinfeld. Seinfeld? How about you, Mario? Ah, oh, this is tough. Let's think. Can I hear the word? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just, I'm just going to pull a name out of a hat. Let's go with Ray Romano. Ray Romano. And you would be absolutely correct. He Ray looks Romano, like the accounting type, you know? He has a bachelor's degree in accounting from Queens College in New York City. Well, see, that? you got to have a fallback. Seinfeld's show is just way too popular. That's he true. didn't have anything. He just wanted to go out there and... It's a show about nothing. Okay. But everybody How much education is in that? Everybody Advertising. <laughs> Advertising degree. How about these three? Tina Fey, Mariah Carey, Kenny Chesney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not Mariah Carey. Not Mariah Carey? No, no, no. She's in a lot of commercials, though. She, she does advertising. Yes. But I'm going to go with Kenny Chesney on that one. What were the other choices? Maybe? Mariah Carey, Kenny Chesney, and who else? Tina Fey. Tina Fey. I'd pick her. I think she's right. I think you saw these answers and you're trying to steer me down the wrong path. <laughs> I think you already made your selection. Yeah. <laughs> I'm what do you say, think, I'm just going to say Mariah Carey because she said it couldn't be Mariah Carey. Neither of you are correct because it's Kenny Chesney. I said Kenny, Kenny Chesney. Chesney. Oh, well, <laughs> you, when you went back and forth and you went Tina Fey, Kenny Chesney, you wanted to pick all three. Oh, it's okay. confusing. We just have like a minute for one or two more. Uh, how about architecture? Architecture. Okay, here's your options. Barbara Streisand. Clover. Tim Allen. He did carpentry on his sitcom. Not very well. That's true. Weird Al Yankovic. Weird Al. I gotta, you've got to go with Weird Al. Anytime he's mentioned, I don't care what the question is, I'm picking Weird Al. I'm going to pick Weird Al because I bet he has like five degrees in random things. <laughs> I don't know about five degrees, but he did attend California State University, hmm. not of Pennsylvania. Oh, uh, is that the name of the school? Not yes, of Pennsylvania. Not in Pennsylvania. <laughs> California Where University, he earned not a degree in architecture. So, hey, I'm getting the wrap it up sign. So, as much fun as this was, guys, I'm going to have to uh, have to toss over to our musical group today, Clinton Ford. Do they have any degrees? I'm sure many, many degrees. Okay. Okay. I mean, you should ask them. University. From, uh, of Pennsylvania. Of, of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Not of not Pennsylvania. So let's put our hands together for Clinton Forgery, guys.
Well, that's Clinton forgery for you there. Now, ladies, I want to thank you for being on the program tonight. And, Jan, before, uh, before the show, we were talking just a, a little bit about the unique instruments that you have there. Why don't you uh, explain to us the, the instruments that you're playing? Nancy and Carol are playing hammered dulcimers. Um, this instrument goes back probably to biblical times, and you will find an instrument like this in almost every culture in the world. Uh, I'm playing a corded zither, which is known today as an auto harp, and the zither also is extremely old. This variation of it, th the way we play it now, was invented in the United States by a man named Mr. Zimmerman in the late 1800s. Fantastic. So you're, you're really keeping alive a type of music that is timeless, a type of music that uh, has been around, as you said, for for ages and ages. Before I get too far along, I want to introduce uh, another guest that joined me uh, out here. This is Becky Hilton. Becky, uh, you share an office with us. You've been on the show uh, once before. Mm -hmm. You are now the Uniontown Main Street Manager with the Downtown Business Authority. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the National Road Festival here in just a couple minutes because these ladies will be uh, performing there. Now, uh, how long have each of you been playing your respective instruments. Um, Nancy and I started playing together at Prickett's Fort, which is in Fairmont, West Virginia. And that was in the mid-1980s. And we started playing our instruments about then. We'd been playing a little bit before then. And then Carol joined with the rest of our group. And we're not all the group. We're about half the group. So Carol started playing with us about 1992. Okay, and other instruments in the group that are normally normally played? We have a fiddle player, we have a mandolin player, we have a guitar player. Uh, on occasion, Carol will get inspired and she will also play along on the flute. So, depending on the venue and what kind of music we need to do. Oh, that's great. So, the name of the group is Clinton Forgery. Why don't you tell me uh, why the particular name? Um, our whistle play. We have a man who plays... Um, octave mandolin and also plays Irish style penny whistle and he came up with that Nancy's husband Ronnie is a blacksmith and of course the place where a blacksmith works is called a forge and his is in Clinton district and we're tunesmiths okay fantastic so that gives us a little bit of an insight there to the name uh, so w we were also talking I people are interested or excuse me, people are interested in these instruments. If they'd like to learn how to play, what's your advice to someone who's, who's looking to pick it up? We all talked that over and said the best thing to do is go on the Internet and find a teacher. And there are lots of people who play, particularly hammered dulcimers, not so many auto harp players, but there are people available to teach you these instruments. If you should happen to find, like, an auto harp somewhere, go find a good guitar player. You can learn a lot from them. Sure. So I may have a couple more questions for you, but I want to get some time in uh, for Becky to tell us about the uh, the downtown Uniontown uh, piece of the National Road Festival, uh, and that's going to be coming up on May 18th. Is that correct? Correct. Um, our hours are 12 to 4 on that Saturday. Um, it's centered around the passing of the wagon train, and then we have other activities scheduled for that time period, and then a few things after. So this is one of the first years uh, in quite some time that downtown Uniontown has been uh, kind of involved er, with the festival. Prior to that, you know, the horses just kind of passed through town and, and uh, couldn't really stop because of the, the asphalt and so forth. So they just moved through town and the festival uh, missed downtown. But you have some things planned for this year. I, I know you just handed me a big list before the show. Why don't we go over a few of those? Okay. Um, and the wagon train will be stopping at Mount Macrina and they're camping there and there's going to be a Boy Scout camp out that same night and there will be other activities um, happening up there um, at that time. Um, well, the wagon train is suspected about 2.30 so um, of course people will come out to watch that anyway but um, this year uh, starting at noon we're going to have a um, historical building tour um, that is going to go f all the way from the courthouse to the State Theater and then onto the Fayette Building and then three churches are involved um, and they're giving tours that day. And the churches, those are Asbury, St. Peter's and Great Bethel, that's correct? Right, that's right, yes. 
Yes, and then throughout town, town we have vintage cars parked for people to look at. So we're so hoping to represent each decade from the 1900s on into the 80s. Um, and we are also having um, an antique appraisal at Vintage Antiques and a quilt appraisal at So Special. So you can bring your quilts and your antiques and you know ask to find out their value and their age or any information like that and then they'll give you an appraisal. Yeah. Uh, I know you wanted to get in the vintage baseball game right. so why don't you tell us about that. Um, we have a group coming from Harrisburg called the Keystone Baseball Club of Harrisburg and they play vintage games. They have traditional dress they wear and they play the game as it was back in the 1800 era. And um, they're playing a team that was organized by Buffy Anderson and um, they're a team from Uniontown, local people that have baseball experience and they're going to be tr up against the Keystone. So you know, I I would imagine that the ballparks uh, probably weren't as big back then, weren't lit, and uh, you didn't have to worry about uh, media right. timeouts, huh? Right. We originally they asked to be in a space that didn't have a fence and didn't have a baseball field because they're used to playing in just a a field, not any you know spaces or anything like that. But it, the area wasn't quite large enough. We picked. Um, Marshall Park, but it was a little bit too small. They were afraid of running into trees. <laughs> so we moved it to, the, to Bailey Park. Well, that'll be a little bit safer maybe for the players. That <laughs> now also for the athletes that want to come out that aren't uh, going to be playing baseball, yeah. they could be running or walking in the 5K walk race from 5 to 7.30 called yeah. Chase the Wagon. Uh, that goes right down Main Street. Where do they sign up? Where do they come to? to right here at this corner on Arch and Main, there's um, a parking lot right outside this building, and that, that's where the registration takes place. Okay. So, um, you know, we, we save music till last because Clinton Forgery uh, is here, and they're going to actually be playing for your festival. Yes, where can are. we find them if we want to hear more of their music? They're going to be out be here beside the log cabin or St. Peter's Church right in this back area behind the building where we are right now. But yeah. Other music that's going to be there that day? We have um, guitars playing at Story Square all day. Different um, players are leading. Um, Phil Crawford, Tim Litvin, Nick McFadden. Was that right? Nick McFadden. Um, Daryl Smith, Matthew Gerard, so, and Mike Forensic, um, they're all going to be playing at intermittent different times at, at Story Square, so there'll be music there all day long. Um, For uh, our frequent viewers of the program, they probably remember Daryl Smith from uh, last season. He, he was on the show. Yeah. Tim Litvin's been on the mm -hmm. show before. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Gerard has been on uh, mm -hmm. just a, a lot of great musicians that, uh, that they'll get to catch up with right. that day. Yes, and these guys are very active in our community. They, they're encouraging the young people to learn. They're doing all kinds of things. They come out for our Story Square. Um, I understand Daryl Smith actually makes um, instruments, so um, he could be one of our artisans. Um, and we all are having the Albert Gallatin Drum and Fife Corps playing at the courthouse on the set. Sure. Well, thanks for being with us. You'll stay with us and uh, close out the show for us uh, a little bit later. Uh, we'll be back with more Going Live with FCTV in just a moment. Hello, Fayette TV. It's your old buddy Dave Plasark from Going Live with FCTV. We are here, here in beautiful Brazil. And uh, just check out this view. It's been an amazing day of hiking. I'm here with uh, GSE, uh, Group Study Exchange, program coordinated by Rotary International. So I want to thank the Rotary Club of Uniontown for endorsing me to be a member of this program. Uh, it's been a wonderful opportunity for professional development, cultural learning, making a lot of new friendships down here, trying some great food. Chef Mario will be jealous. So I have a lot of stories for you when I come back. Thanks for watching. God bless all of you right here from Brazil. Do you have a buy local card? Yes, I have one. I do. Yeah, I have one. I use mine every day. Where's your buy local card? Use your buy local card to save money at restaurants, grocery stores, retail shops, tourist attractions, and service providers. Cards can be purchased online at www.buylocalfayette.org or by calling 724-437-7913. Savor the flavor of Fayette. Buy local. Thanks for sticking around. We have a lot more of a great show lined up for you today, but without any further ado, I'm going to uh, introduce once again to the Going Live Couch, uh, Miss Emily Lapasardi from Market Street Arts and the Market Street Arts Festival. 
How are you this evening? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me again. Well, thanks for coming back. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the festival you have coming up. Just some fantastic stuff. May 17th, 18th, and 19th, is yes. that correct? Um, why is the festival part of the National Road Festival weekend? We knew there would be a lot of traffic along Route 40 that weekend. National road events in Brownsville had really decreased over a number of years because the wagon train wasn't coming anymore. So we wanted to have something that would be a bigger draw. Now, it is, it's really a big draw, especially for the arts community, am I correct? Yes. Um, so why was your team so passionate about bringing quality art to Brownsville? We really believe in the transformative power of the arts, especially in a community that has gone through some rough times. I know myself as a professional artist that exposure to things when children are young can transform their lives. We wanted to have a wide variety of not only visual but musical, dramatic, dance artists so that the local students are exposed to this and so that the artists who are all regional have a venue to perform. So, Jen, you're an artist as well. Yes. Have you ever had the chance to come down to the uh, Market Street Arts Festival? I have not. Um, I was looking it up last night. I saw it's like the third year yes. that you guys have been having it. Um, no, but I'm definitely going to. I saw that you've had like flaming hula hoops. They'll be back this year. I have a friend that does that. Really? I wonder if it's her that's going to be there and like with jewelry making mm -hmm. and lots of bands. Now, yeah. my favorite, and, and you know, you may think this is ridiculous or it's <laughs> funny when you hear it, is the giant puppet. But really, I saw the pictures from last year, and it's really kind of a cool thing that that. Marches down or around <laughs> the street. How giant is giant? I haven't he's, seen it. He's about eight feet tall. Oh, so he's huge. He yes. is, yeah. He's a more than life size puppet. Uh, and if you are a sponsor for the event, one of the options for recognition is to have your name put on the giant puppet. Oh, wow. Is your name on the puppet? Uh, it's not yet, but. Uh, How much does it, it cost to get your name, like, as his t shirt. As his t shirt? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think they put the names all over, is that right. correct? Yeah. So, how much is it maybe to get the price it's, range for a giant puppet name? It's $20 to be on See, Artie's so outfit. It's, it's affordable to be on his outfit. And what is his name? Artie Brown. Artie Brown, okay. So, because he's an artist from Brownsville? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Now, so, I was reading that it's all private donations and it's free to the public to come. Is yes, this is really a grassroots mm -hmm. effort. It is funded largely through donations from businesses, from private individuals, and this year we have a few political sponsors as well. Very nice. Now, there's some big names as far as uh, music that are coming. Uh, one that I'm familiar with is Cello Fury. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about them and, and some of the other musical acts? We are so excited that we got Cello Fury. We thought it would be a long shot, but we contacted them and they were willing to do it. It is a cello rock fusion ensemble, three amplified cellos and a drum set. Wow. It's a very high energy show. They've done Pittsburgh's first night for a number of years. They've performed for audiences as big as 56,000. That's amazing. I've seen them a few times and it is unlike anything else. See, now fusion cooking is a big thing. <laughs> fusion music must be as yes, well. Yes, it is. Especially. For classical artists, these three cellists were all classically trained, but there's only so many orchestra positions out there, and there's not as much of an interest in that as there used to be. So they developed this totally different style and have amassed this huge following. So yeah. Have you ever seen them? No, I haven't. When are they playing? Because we'll have to come check them out. They are the closing event, so it's Sunday evening at mm -hmm. 6 o'clock. What about other performers throughout the weekend? We have back-to-back -back schedule in three venues. We have an outdoor stage. We're using Christchurch Anglican and also the Sons of Italy Hall. We have ensembles ranging from Celtic music to country to rock. We have a steel drum band this year. They're coming in from Ohio. That's the Calypso Gypsies. Calypso Gypsies. Hi. Now, before the show, I was saying how much fun a name like Calypso Gypsy is. In yes. fact, I thought that our very own Scary Harry, the cameraman, <laughs> might have gone by Calypso G Gypsy in his college days. Well, Maybe that, that was his possible. CB name you one think? time a long time back. <laughs> Come in, Calypso Gypsy. <laughs> Over. Yeah. But sounds like a lot of fun. Other musical acts? 
There are a number that are celebrating the ethnic heritage of the re region, not only the Irish ensemble. We have a choir performing pieces in Polish. We have an accordionist. We also are doing an emphasis on the river this year because the Monongahela was named Pennsylvania River of the Year. So we have a group called River Song. We also have Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter Ray Owen, who is doing a show specifically on local heritage. He'll be talking about the river, the railroad, the Civil War, the Revolutionary War, and doing a lot of music that comes from not only American history, but also from this region. So um, there's competitions going on. Yes. Tell me a little bit about them. We have the Market Street Arts Horizons competition, which is for visual arts, writing, musical composition, drama, and puppetry. Within each of those genres, we have age categories for elementary school, middle school, high school, and adults. The visual arts winners will have a juried exhibition as part of the festival. We'll also have an exhibition of works by California University students. The compositions will be performed at the festival. We're having a festival magazine this year, so all of the writing competition winners will be published in the magazine. Well, that wow. is great. How long do you have to submit uh, pieces, or have they already been submitted? It is early in May. Okay. So early I still in have May. a little bit of time, maybe. Yes. I think so. <laughs> All of the information is on the website, which is MarketStreetArtsFest.com. We have the forms there, the regulations for the competition, as well as the schedule of all the performances. So uh, it, it really sounds like there is something for everyone out there, whether you're looking for music, whether you're, you know, you're looking for a traditional type of art, contemporary art. It's all there for you. Yes, we have hands-on activities for families as well, art projects and a lot of food. We have food vendors this year coming in from as far away as New York and Eastern Pennsylvania. So we'll have a big variety of foods and we're going with the ethnic emphasis there too. So there's going to be a wide range of cuisine. It always yes. amazes me that southwestern Pennsylvania is really a melting pot uh, for food but also for art. I yes. Think. We're looking at Brownsville being the meeting point of the road and the river. We're looking at cross currents and how various aspects of the arts intersect, how various ethnic cultures intersect. That's really the focus of the festival this year. So it's like a fusion. <laughs> so uh, we are going to have to wrap it up for, the, for today, uh, but I want to thank you for being with us. Why don't you give out the information, the website, time, location, one more time for those who are watching at home. Website is www.marketstreetartsfest.com. Festival starts Friday evening, that's May 17th, with the award ceremony for the competitions. Then festival hours are 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. on both Saturday and Sunday. Well, that's fantastic. And I, like we mentioned in the opening, uh, it's all privately funded. So if you're able to support at any level, make sure you visit the website. Make sure uh, you get your name on big Art Brown? Artie, Artie Brown? Brown yeah. Artie Brown. <laughs> the giant puppet that's going to be coming through the Market Street Arts Festival May 17th through the 19th in Brownsville. Thanks for being with us, Emily. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment with more Going Live with FCTV. Join rock powerhouse Cello Fury and artists and performers of all ages on May 17th to 19th for the Market Street Arts Festival. A celebration of life, creative energy, and vitality in historic downtown Brownsville, where the Monongahela River meets the National Road and the past meets the future. Writing, music, and visual arts competitions, hands-on art activities for the young and young at heart. Thanks once again for staying with us. Uh, we're over in the demo corner of the room today with Gianna from uh, Barrera's Shoe and Leather Repair. You're located in downtown Uniontown? Yeah, right on Fayette Street, um, kind of across from Senior Life where Sherwin-Williams is in that plaza. Okay, so um, you're meeting a need in the community that really there's no one else out there doing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, we, when we moved here two years ago, I grew up in McClellan Town and we kind of wanted to bring it back to Uniontown because we knew there was nobody here and we have a lot of people that 
like leather and they want to get their shoes fixed and we thought that we would be a good asset to downtown Uniontown and it's been well for us. It's We're happy to be in downtown and we're happy that the, the county welcomed us so warmly like they did and we've been open two and a half years almost. Great. Now, yeah. Jen, have you ever had a pair of shoes repaired before? No, actually, I have not. Have you ever had a pair of shoes that you really liked and wanted repaired? Yes, I wore a pair of shoes until they completely fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something we're going to talk about Absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely. I have some shoes that are actually falling apart okay. <laughs> that were just brought in. Um, this is, I don't know if you can see it well. These but shoes were actually in Chef Mario's closet. <laughs> <laughs> they probably were. Yeah. I think it was him that brought them in. He brought them in? He had a brown wig on, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But you can see her soles are completely, there's not much left of her heel. It's kind of wow. deteriorating, yeah. And you can see the colors all wore off. And my husband, who does all the work, um, put new soles on them. They're nice leather and shined them up for you. Okay. And you can just see the difference. <laughs> there's a huge difference. Yeah. I can't even believe that's it's the same <laughs> shoe. Now, but if you were to continue, number one, you wear a shoe like this, your <laughs> foot's going to be wet. You're right. not going to have the correct support. Uh, right. You can tell this one's even worn at a certain angle. Yep, absolutely. Um, but right here, you're brand new. You're ready to go. Yep, and you can see on this one, you can see the, like my husband built it up. If you can't really see it from a distance, but you can tell he built it up just by looking at that one. Okay. And it's as good as new. You'll never be able to tell, and we can. How much wear? Okay, this probably took a few years to get this amount of wear. Yeah. How long will <laughs> replacement last? The same amount of time? Um, or? It depends on how you wear them. She rides horses a lot. Okay. So hers might wear a little bit more frequently. But we have another option that you could do instead of leather. I can show you on this one. But generally, if you take care of them, you get a, at least, I would say at least about a year or more, depending on how rough you are on them. Okay. As you can see, hers are... Hers are worn. Pretty worn. Yeah. Okay. So th the men's shoes, let's talk about them for a minute. Okay. These, this is how they they came in. Uh, it's completely falling apart. Okay. Had that happen? Yep. <laughs> Looks more like a moccasin right yeah. now than it's yeah. Right. Exactly. You can see like the, this is a leather sole again, um, and the color is worn and everything. And then my husband put a new heel on it, and you can see the heels have a nice tread to them. Sure. Mm -hmm. So when you go outside or you, when you walk into like that mall when it's that tile, you won't slide across it. And um, instead of putting a leather sole, he put rubber on for her, so she it's a bit more safe okay. to, to walk through. And it's a, sometimes you can't always repair the leather soles, and mm -hmm. this is a nice alternative okay. to that. That might almost be better in some cases, because, I mean, how right. often have you slid? Right, yeah, absolutely. Is, yeah. I get this put on all my shoes because I'm an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so this goes on all my shoes, but it's it's really nice to to do. And then just some of the other things that we do that I'm going to teach you how to to okay. do is we make some leather leather goods, custom made, like this leather bag. We hand stamp it, and we can open it up. It's a nice big. We were it's all leather. Checking this out before the show. I I mean that's amazing. I love that. I so think it's beautiful. I know. Look, and you I can put it cross can body uh -huh. or yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, it would be big enough to go cross. Yeah. We nice. tried to make it versatile for that reason, and again, that purse it'll last you a lifetime. Now these could be custom made too. Absolutely. So if you want something that's you know a little bit different, smaller, different mm -hmm. sizes, and that's what's nice. We don't have a huge showroom of things. You can come in, bring your old favorite purse, and say, I love the shape of this purse. We can make it out of that leather. So you could kind of go like from Absolutely. a pattern of an old favorite. Yeah. Wow. And even just like the different designs and the different colors, we can do different. Yeah. So let's get started with yep. the fun stuff Absolutely. here. Absolutely. You're, <laughs> You're going to learn how to make this belt today. Okay. You're going to learn how to make this belt with the pattern. And it's a solid strip of leather. You know how you go out and you buy those belts and you spend an arm and a leg sure. and then they peel apart to find out there's nothing but cardboard in it. Mm -hmm. This is just a solid piece of leather. This is what it comes in like. Okay. And you can feel, yep. Yeah. So what you want to do first is you want to take the water and just spray the leather down a little bit. Okay. And get it. That's good. Yeah. And then this is a grid you're going to use to kind of mark because you're going to use this little diamond tool. Okay. So kind of just, kind of like math class. Okay. <laughs> you can just put it Were down. Were you good in math class? Uh, no. no. I, was I wasn't not. either. Were you good in art class? And then you can just like rub it down. 
I'm a little worried about this segment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just rub it, and then you'll see how it puts the grid down okay. for you. And we'll that'll that. all disappear once you start going. Okay. So what you want to do is you see the four points on there. Okay. You want to. Four points. You can start right. I'm gonna put it in each of these. You're gonna line it up on those lines like that. Okay. Do you see how that? Okay. So yep. now we're going yep. over the Watch line. Watch your fingers. Oh. And yeah. how hard do we? Hit it pretty hard. Okay. And you just keep following those patterns. And you want to put a lot of pressure down so it doesn't move on you. That yeah, one's a little crooked. <laughs> it's That's okay. how you know it's handmade. <laughs> exactly. So you, you did the pull belt like uh -huh. that yep. by hand. Everyone That's not is, how yep. I thought it was done at yep. all. <laughs> it is. And we like it because we can do like different things. Mm -hmm. um, well, like on this one, you have the middle section and then you have yep. the We have border. some different out embellishments. So I can show you. We can do... I'm sure the things. sound guys love while you're talking <laughs> and I'm hitting this. <laughs> That's how it is in our shop That's every how it day. Is? Every so when day. you call on the phone, you have to... <laughs> it's either my husband's sanding machine <laughs> fixing the shoes or me banging a hammer. <laughs> or the kids that. in the background or the dog, one or the other. <laughs> you know all that anger I have built up? Oh, you, yeah, like you can well. see, yep, and then it'll just make those circles. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. And then, and then you can add like a different type of border. I did like little circles on that one. Your circles aren't as perfect as her circles. No, <laughs> we we talked about this beforehand. It <laughs> wasn't going to work out. But, but you can go ahead and like you can put something like this. Okay. Like a little. You can go ahead and just with my fingers. Yep. And you can do something, just oh. something different. And it's a one of a kind piece of, it's art really because you yeah. do everything how you want it. Okay. So that's how you do this. Now, mm -hmm. this is, do you call this tanning, dyeing, color? That's what do you dye. do? I this have is a some, dye? this is actually a blue and silver mix. Because all leather is going to be this color. Right, right, all leather. I mean, you can get it in different colors, um, okay. but that is stained. This is, it's a little messy. This is a red and silver, and um, I'll have all of my. That's going to look great on the cuffs of my shirt. Right, that's why I'll do it. That way you don't get all, <laughs> get all red. But you can just, you just put it on and. I like to leave it on a little thick because it gives a little bit of a deeper color. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then now does that dry or you wipe it back off? Yeah, I'm gonna wipe it back off. Okay. I usually use like a cloth, but I forgot my cloth with me. This is just to give you an idea. But then you can go ahead and put the color on it. And it, that's like a Wow. Yeah. And we have all different colors. We can do like navy blue, you know how hard navy blue belts are to find. Mm -hmm. We can do like navy blue, black. I've actually never looked for one, but you probably have. And women <laughs> love navy blue. Okay. As you can tell by my blue, women love <laughs> navy blue. And, and it's hard, hard to, to find. It's hard to find things very like high, yeah. Very hard for navy blue colors. <laughs> but that's basically how we do it. And we have all kinds of different shapes and patterns and just different fun things that you can really customize and do what you want. Now, in an, a couple earlier segments, we were talking about the National Road Heritage Festival. Mm -hmm. You're going to be part of that festival. We are. We are. We try to be as active as we can downtown to bring any sort of business to the downtown area. We're going to be doing a little kids craft area, if you will. We're going to have little coasters for them where they can stamp their name or initials. Or <laughs> we have different things like motorcycles or you know like little deer heads. Like if they, yeah, if they, you know, like like things like that. We even have little flowers and crosses. So and these are all just different stamps. That mm hmm. You that we can go ahead and punch on there. Yeah, you, oh, use this oh. part. Yep. You have to hit that one really hard. Oh. I think you have a new hobby. There you you know, do. I do. Yeah, no, no more anger. You're no. going to be like the happiest oh, person in yeah. the world. Yeah. You're going to be working out all your that. anger. <laughs> it's true. It's a good stress relief. Yeah. <laughs> But isn't that isn't that adorable? I really like that. Yeah, we do great. a lot of holsters and rifle straps and <laughs> things like that, cell phone cases and the men. As much as men will admit it, they like things like that just like women do. Sure. Um, so they can meet you at the National Road Heritage Festival. Yep. I apologize. We're just about out of time. That is not but a problem. But if they're looking for your storefront, they can find it across from Senior Life. Absolutely. We're right across the street. Fayette, Fayette Street, street yep. in downtown Uniontown. Yep. We'll be back with more Going Live with FCTV in just a moment.
A few years ago, I was at a dead end, underemployed, with no idea of where my life was headed. Then I enrolled at the Pennsylvania Institute of Health and Technology School of Healthcare Careers and discovered a great career and great life was only months away. Now, I've started the career of my dreams and the future couldn't be brighter. The School of Healthcare Careers at the Pennsylvania Institute of Health and Technology offers career-focused, hands-on training for these in-demand fields. Call 724-437-4600 or visit piht.edu for information. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, we said there was a loaded show here today and uh, just <laughs> demos everywhere. Right now, we're going to be talking to Vicki Marietta. Vicki, thanks for being with us. Uh, if you've ever been part of a production, anything like this show, you know that you have uh, a lot of guests you have to line up and sometimes we try to do little themes or little vignettes and uh, I've been hearing about Vicki Marietta uh, from our production staff and your, uh, your mustards and things that you have there for probably two months because they're like okay she's great we got to get her on and uh, whether it's been our side or your side it, it hasn't happened but we're very happy that you're here today to be with us uh, so tell me a little bit about how your backyard gardens market came about? Well, I started in 2006 with a recipe that was an old-fashioned recipe a lot of people in the area make. I did it as a hobby. Okay. And I started selling it at the Pumpkin Festival in Confluence just to see if it would sell. And it did. And what so, was it? my hot pepper mustards. This is what I make. Okay. And they're sweet and hot pepper mustards made with banana peppers jalapenos or habaneros. Wow. And they are in four flavors, mild, mm -hmm. hot, hotter, and hottest. <laughs> 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 but uh, I started out in 2006 with one festival. In 2007, I uh, found a co-packer to package for me because I couldn't get zoning to manufacture at home. Okay. And I found a small company in Punxsutawney that makes my recipes and jars it for me. And I started out the first real year doing six farmers markets a week. I called it market research at the farmers market. <laughs> went great. The next year I was able to rent space in the old school in Ohio Pow where I grew up. And I decided to do retail. Of course, a mustard store would be pretty silly on its own. So I thought, what can I sell to go with my mustard? I'd made a lot of friends at the six farmers markets a week the summer before, so I started sure. calling them and I said, I want to sell your jam, I want to sell your honey, I want to sell your produce. And it started out with a handful of items. I, four years ago, moved into a much larger space within the community center. I have 1,500 square feet of retail space and I specialize in all locally made, locally grown products. So all the products that you find here are something that we could obtain in your store? In my store. Backyard Gardens Backyard in Ohio Gar Pile. Yes. This is a small sampling of what I have in my store. And I do jellies and jams and honeys and syrups and, but we do jewelry. Now we're, we do We, we were art. trying these on beforehand. We so do. We, uh, we, we <laughs> just have to mention for a minute, especially because Jen's an artist, so uh -huh. I, I guess you probably, uh, look at things a little bit differently than some people maybe. Uh, these are recycled art, correct? That's recycled art. And these yeah. are, uh, if, if you can see, this is a, uh, a pop, pop tab can. from like a pop can. Yeah. So uh, I've, I guess I won't look at those the same way uh, anymore because there's a functional purpose that okay. someone has. But the basis of my store is everything comes from within a hundred miles of Ohio Pile. Okay. And there's very little that I sell that doesn't. I have a necessity corner for campers that nothing is local in there. It's batteries and things that they always come looking for. But the basis of what we do is to find everything that's good within 100 miles. We're like the farmer's market seven days a week. Mm -hmm. We do fresh produce from the time the produce season starts until it ends. I deal with as many as 20 different local farmers a week for fresh produce. Mm -hmm. okay, and now. I want to stop you right there. I have a question. What if you can't make it to the farmer's market? If you can't come to the farmer's market, mm -hmm. I have produce every day in my store. Mm -hmm. I run the farmer's market in Ohio Pile on Saturday afternoons from 2 to 6. Mm -hmm. But I've also started a CSA program in Ohio Pile. Right. Explain uh, that a little bit. CSA, we've talked about that before. It's community supported agriculture is what mm -hmm. it stands for. And it can be run different ways. It can be with one farmer who it grows an abundance of produce. 
and you buy direct from that farmer a weekly share throughout the growing season. Mm -hmm. Mine is a co-op. Mm -hmm. I buy from other local farmers and put it together for my customers. So if Matt and I went in there if you and came we in, wanted to buy a If you wanted portion, to buy a share, mm -hmm. it's a $25 a week share for a 10-week season. Okay. We basically start 4th of July and run through Labor Day. It's the peak produce season for our area. And you get whatever is fresh, local, and available that day. Mm -hmm. It's picked fresh in the morning. I buy it by noon. Get it back. You pick it up starting at 4 in the afternoon till 7 <laughs> in the evening. So it doesn't get any fresher. So you don't, you don't know, okay, I'm going to get 14 heads of cabbage this summer, mm -hmm. or, you know, but it's, what <laughs> is, it's what's available and, and what's prime that week. And you don't just get one thing. Okay. You get $25 worth of produce, and I package it. I, I ask you up front how large a family you have, how many you're buying for, and I package accordingly and give you as much variety within that $25 basket as I can. So you get corn, tomatoes, you get zucchinis, you get blueberries, strawberries, you get whatever is available, and you get a nice variety each week. So you're not eating the same thing. And if it's grown yeah. local, probably less pres preservatives. Most uh, of what I get is organic. Organic. None of it's certified. I deal with a large group of Amish farmers for most of my produce out of Springs, Pennsylvania. Okay. For my store, it's 32 miles. And they actually hold an auction twice a week where they auction their produce to wholesale buyers. And I'm fortunate enough to, to be one of those buyers, and, and I get the nicest, best produce, and it's, it's fresh that day. So. so for the CSA, probably the only one in the county, is that correct? I or think in the so. Local area? As far as I know, we're the only one in the county right now. And, uh, well, I think we're, we're getting close to time, and I okay. know you're going to show us something well, with your mustard. with my mustard, I give out little recipe cards to give people ideas of things they can use it for. Okay. And you can use it for sandwiches. You can use it for barbecue. You can use it for a lot of things. Do you like hot? I, you know or what? Mild? I'm a mild kind of person. Right. How about you? Mild. Yeah, I'm mild, mild too? too. Okay. Um, the easiest yeah. <laughs> recipe I give out to people, Okay. this is ideas, and on the other side are two recipes that you can use this for. Okay. The easiest one is the top one. Easy dip? Easy dip. Okay. Can't get any easier. We have a plate with Philadelphia okay. cream cheese, your favorite cracker. Sure. And you just simply pour it over. And that way you can scoop as much or as little of the mustard with the cream cheese as you, as you would like. Okay. So it's very good on crackers. Actually could go a little hotter on this because you can get a little, a little bit, bit of the mustard cream and cheese. a lot of the cream cheese to yeah. turn it down. You okay. Can. So we're not even going to mix that up at I'm all. I'm not even going to mix it. You Talk can about mix it. easy. That's, That's easy. easy. Yeah, Man. exactly. Anybody can do this recipe. Chef Mario, when he teaches me a new dish, it's like 45 steps. Well, <laughs> you can get so your mixer like out and mix this up. Trying to take scales out of fish. and But this is... This this is easy. This is easy. Okay. Yeah. Anybody can make this. You want to give this a try? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it was mild, right? <laughs> it is mild. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you going to try one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll make, I'll make you one. Thank you. See, I'll it's a, a sweet try. recipe, would, would so you're actually going to taste no, sweet. No, Dave doesn't. He doesn't make me anything, <laughs> except for mad, but that's <laughs> another story. Mm. Mm. Very good. The recipe oh, is really sweet, so you taste mm -hmm. sweet, and you get the flavor of the pepper. It's really not and hot. And if you do mm -hmm. hot, you get heat last. Okay. This is a totally mild pepper. It's okay. sweet banana peppers. The yellow one is hot banana. Same yeah, flavor, okay. but a little heat at the end. Fantastic. So your storefront is located I'm in... I'm in the community center, which is our old schoolhouse in Ohio Pile. Okay. It's at 15 Sherman Street. I am one block from the falls. I'm one block from the bike trail. Okay. And I'm in... Two classrooms that face the firehouse. Very easy to find. Look for lime green signs in Ohio Pile and okay. you'll find me. Well, hey, thanks for being with us. Great products, local products, healthy products, some of them, uh, that you can get there. Uh, don't forget about the CSA that's going on. Uh, we'll be back with more Going Live with FCTV in just a moment. Do you have a Buy Local card? Yes, I have one. I do. Yeah, I have one. I use mine every day. Where's your Buy Local card? Use your Buy Local card to save money at restaurants, grocery stores, retail shops, tourist attractions, and service providers. Cards can be purchased online at www.buylocalfayette.org or by calling 724-437-7913. Savor the flavor of Fayette. Buy Local.
Welcome back to Going Live with FCTV. I'm Maria Pareka. I'm here with Sharon Clay from Christian W. Clay Winery. And uh, this is probably the best segment to be on this entire show, so I'm <laughs> thrilled. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. And uh, so we're going to talk about wine. Mm -hmm. We're not going to wine. We're going to talk about wine. Well, I'm the head whiner. I can wine all I want. <laughs> well, well, fair point, fair point. Um, so why don't you tell us about the winery a little bit, uh, the operation. Just give us the load on the... If someone's in an elevator, give us your elevator speech. <laughs> okay. The Christian Clay Winery opened on oh, 1997. But we actually started planting the vineyard in 1989. So we are the total wine experience. We grow it. You can come help pick it. And then we do the fermentation right there in our bottling and sales right at the winery. We do lots of events and, of course, wine and food are a natural. Absolutely. If you ever want to come up and do some Perry's, I'd love it. Yeah, absolutely. We can talk about that. Um, now, my question to you is from hearing that, you said the, the uh, vines were planted when? Nin we started in 1989. 89, but then you didn't open until 97, you said? Mm -hmm. So, now, I ask you this because... I've talked to uh, some uh, wine experts in the past, you know, being in the food biz, and it really, the, the age of the vine makes a huge difference to the quality of the wine. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so how old, your vines now are, are they just get better every season? Some of them are in their 20s now, just like Christian. <laughs> so they're old enough to drink? <laughs> yes, they're old enough to drink. Um, uh, what's curious about grapes that most people don't appreciate is they really don't like a rich soil and more is not better. So the first few years you get tons and tons of grapes and leaves, mm -hmm. but it throws the balance off. You have to wait five to seven years for the vine to get in balance where you've cut off a lot every year until there's enough leaves to ripen each cluster and you get a better wine that way. Wow. To have more grapes doesn't mean that you're going to make a better wine. Wow, that's interesting. So, now, do you grow other things other than grapes that you're Yes, water? apples, and we started planting lavender. We're I'm going to finish with that. our sparkling lavender wine because they like the same soil. Okay. I was going to say, are there challenges between growing the different fruits? No, actually, lavender likes a dry and poor soil, just like grapes. That's, that's why I selected it as a second crop. So, how many different varieties of grape do you grow? Well, actually, we started, I'm going to put it in a nutshell. We moved here from Manhattan, knowing nothing nothing at all about farming. Um, started with 100 different varieties because no one ever grew grapes here. Over the years, we've culled it back to maybe around 50 varieties. Many of them we just keep for future propagation. So I'd say I'm working with about 25 varieties now, okay. making That's 17 to 19 uh, different varieties. So wines. You said when you got when you came here, you didn't know anything about wine. No. So what made you say, "Hey, I think I'm going to do wine"? Did you just wake up? Did you have a dream one night? Did you? Did someone? <laughs> was it a bet you lost? What happened? Well, no. Once there were a thousand grape vines in the ground and they didn't die, I went, that's too much for grape jelly. <laughs> so I might well, so as well order more. To do grape jelly. No, actually, my husband was just curious, uh, you know, what grapes would grow here. And I was just sort of like, well, that's interesting, but they're going to die. And they didn't. So I actually absolutely got hooked because it's a miracle every year. You start with a stick and you end up with a wonderful crop. Oh, that's cool. Now and we, we do like to share that with people um, by doing weddings okay. in and around the vineyard, parties. Um, people actually can come up and have that experience of picking. So do you do, at the, at, the, at the winery, do you do, like, t if someone has nothing to do on a weekend or whatever, can they just pop in and have a tasting? We're open what? seven days a week for tasting, but we usually try to have other things going on, like our murder mystery dinner theaters, um, Sunday afternoon music on the pavilion, where people can either bring their picnic lunch or they can enjoy some of the cheeses and other platters that we would present. Oh, so cool. it's a it's a working farm that really welcomes people. It's a working farm that you're welcome to come work on, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Always looking for extra help. So now give us real quick, well, we're going to start tasting wine here in okay. a minute because I can't wait much longer, I'll be honest. But give us a little, um, just a rundown of what happens exactly between grape to bottle. Well, we do pick everything by hand. We're a very hands-on winery. 
Um, that's why the picking aspect is so important because we start watching the grapes to make sure when each one is going to be at its best because they don't all ripen at the same time. So do you get to walk through and just pop a grape in your mouth? Yeah, we have a refractometer. We okay. check the bricks level. So we hand pick and then we crush. And if it's a white grape, we press it and put it in to a tank and start a fermentation the next day. But if it's a red grape, you're going to leave it, you're just going to crush it and you're going to leave it on the skins. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get a nice deep red color. Otherwise, you would have a white zend if you right. pressed it right away. Because the skin's what gives it the color. Mm -hmm. uh, right, the color is in the skin. Um, during the winter, we cold stabilize it. Then we start doing, as we rack, we start doing our filtering. And then in the spring, we bottle with a little six spout filler that's oh, gravity wow. fed. How, so how much wine do you taste on an average day? <laughs> or, should you, or do you drink? Um, you don't taste, taste it drink? every day. You don't? No, you don't taste it every day because yeah. the change. Maybe you need someone different. that will taste it every day, and I, you know, it's a dirty you volunteer, job. Volunteer, tough yeah. job. <laughs> if, if you need someone, I'm just saying, you can give me a call. I come down. Yeah, I like taste that. Some wines, but um, let's see. What are we? What are we going to taste today? What did you bring for well, us? Well, I wanted to also comment that the other thing that was important when we moved into the area was the history, and we're talking about the National Road. Mm -hmm. But the first thing that struck me was. The obvious thing was that along the National Road, there were so many great points of history and people. So Blanc de Lafayette was one of my first ones. And the history is on the back. Blanc de Lafayette is also mm -hmm. one of my favorite wines because it is a dry floral. Um, the nose is very floral, but it's absolutely dry. And it pairs wonderfully with seafood. Oh, As yeah. I mentioned, we do lo lobster clam bakes. Yeah, my favorite one. I was wondering why you didn't bring us one today. I know, and we even fly them in from Maine, but you know, ah. air traffic was bad. <laughs> <laughs> this one is our. I mean, they should swim in. Uh, a little detour. <laughs> um, although we do do everything from dry white through dry red, and then sweet dessert, where I've selected a few that give you a good sample. Like, this is a, a great one for a chef to work with, the Washington mm -hmm. Tavern White, because it's done in a semi-dry German style, and that okay. gives you so much flexibility. Absolutely. It's, pretty, it's neutral, more yeah, or less, what you could foods. pair with. Because when you're pairing food and wine, you want to kind of match the notes between the two, because you don't want them to clash and then, mm -hmm. you know, take on different things and make it. But what I like about the wines, too, is how you have the history on the back, so I feel like I can drink wine and learn at the same time. It's educational. Absolutely. <laughs> Washington Tavern Red is our signature red. Okay. What it is, is it's a classic blend of the French American hybrids, Chambersand, Foch, Milo, and Cascade. So it's a nice soft red. And as you know, California reds are really big. Right. Pennsylvania reds aren't necessarily very big, but you can approach them much younger. Mm -hmm. And they're softer. You don't have to wait a couple of years okay. for it to mature. I love Pennsylvania very reds. Fruity. You would like this one. I'm sure I would. Let's crack it's it up. It's cruel. <laughs> Come on. No, this is cruel. You're not letting me drink uh, it. Let's go. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Is that the one you want to open? Well, we're going to... You no, pick. It's we're your going choice. to do so your wines. I'll tell you what. I'll leave that one for you to take Ooh, home to study. You're a saint. <laughs> okay. I'll just learn all about it. <laughs> intense. Absolutely. Chestnut Ridge Sunset. This is an entry-level wine for people okay. who usually don't drink wine, but it's a nice uh, semi-sweet blush, and what's deceiving about it is people think that blush wines don't go with food, but they really are so mm -hmm. interactive. Um, when we do the chili cook-off, this is a good mm -hmm. one because heat and sweet actually work well together. Heat and sweet. It, uh, and salty, this will yep. help cancel a saltiness. Okay. But the other thing is it really pulls out the flavor in cheeses. And this is okay. a one of our local cheeses we carry, Alpen, Der Alpen okay. Um It's gut essa, and this cheese, if you would taste it, has some age to it. Okay. And this really, if you taste it first and taste the cheese and taste it again, really pulls out the nuttiness. It's good. It's a little sweet, mm -hmm. but it's not overly. No, I try not to make it cloyingly. Yeah, that works with the cheese really well. 
wait until they That's do. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. So this is our entry level one. Some people will progress to drier wines, and some people will stay at this level and be happy. And it's okay because it's like art. Mm -hmm. Should be whoop. <laughs> and I only had one oh, step. I, you're cut off. I'll take the rest <laughs> of that. Okay. So what else we got? Raspberry Frost is one of our biggest sellers. This is great with fresh fruit and watermelon in the oh, summer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we did this for the Millennium because we didn't really have a dessert wine. So we brought this up for the Millennium, but it was so popular, we didn't take it back. And we better hurry here. Yeah, they're, ye they're getting, they're yelling. Okay. They're angry. Summit Mist. Oh, they're just jealous because they're not drinking they wine. They don't have any wine. Yeah. And you won't get any. Be nice. No, I'm just kidding. That's good. Summit Mist is our other top seller in that mm -hmm. it is a sparkling Fredonia, which is related to uh, Concord. Oh, interesting. And it's great with ice cream in it. You can make a dessert float. Yeah, we were talking about that, and that just kind of <laughs> sent shivers down my spine because <laughs> <laughs> wine and ice cream? Come it's on. great. It's like, it's not even right. Try it. Jimmy. I mean, I thought like root it. beer floats were great, and well, I put a little shot of vodka in my root beer float, <laughs> which is nice, but now this? Come on. Well, that's how I came now up that. with it. No root beer, so. Oh. <laughs> this is what you were I'm waiting for. I'm about this, yes. We do a lavender... Is this, is this the take one? that yeah. one. That one's clean. A lavender fest June 23rd. Please Ooh, come sparkly. up and see. We're growing lavender. This is a semi-sweet wine, Ooh, sparkling wine, infused with lavender flowers. What kind of grape? Uh, the grape in this was actually... A white robe oh, wow, is that good? and Vidal. Yeah, that's it's delicate, that's isn't it? That's good. Oh, that'd be great with desserts. And I want to thank you for being here. This was thank great. You. I learned a lot. I want to come up to the winery and Please learn some pick. more. <laughs> Study, drink, come pick. Okay, we can do that too. Give me a glass, and I'll be more than happy to pick <laughs> a, a bottle, a, like one of those old school Italian gallon jugs. We have 500 gallon tanks. Oh, too. then we're set. We're good. I don't know what we're arguing Bring about. Bring a straw. But thank you again, Sharon, for coming. Thank you. And you want to throw out your phone number, your website, your address, all that stuff before it's we. It's Christian W. Clay Winery, www.cwklaywinery.com in Chalk Hill, 724-439-3424. And we are open and ready. The season has begun. Spring is here. Sounds good. Thanks so much. We're going to throw it back over to Clinton Forgery while we stay here and drink wine. <laughs> so uh, they're going to play us out, and we'll uh, see you later. Thank you.